Good afternoon. We were going to hold this at the uh, St. Louis Post Dispatch, but because of rain, uh, we decided to have it here. And for reasons I, I hope you understand, I humbly ask that you allow me to deliver this prepared statement without following the question. had decided to discharge me for violating the company's ethics policy. On March 27th, I was told by a management to leave the building, pending an investigation. I have not been allowed access since. Not even to gather my own personal belongings or to shake hands with my colleagues and friends I've made over the past nearly six years. I called this press conference to bid farewell to my friends at the Post-Dispatch. I called this press conference to bid farewell to my many, many loyal friends and readers. You all have made this, you all have made this journey, this enjoyable but at times difficult journey with me over the years. You've made it tolerable. You've made it worthwhile. Secondly, I'm here to stand. Secondly, most importantly, I'm here to stand up for my name. I'm here to stand up for my name. I'm here to stand up for my family. I'm here to stand up for my kids. I'm here to stand up for my community. I'm not going to use this occasion to debate ridiculous allegations made against me. We passed out cards with the blog address sylvesterbrownjr.blogspot.com. There you will be able to see the facts related to this battle. You'll be able to keep up with my work. And you'll be able to monitor future developments. In short, to be brief, management alleges that I took a plane trip to Washington, D.C. on March 26 as a gift in return for a column I wrote. The column I wrote and turned in the day before about a renewable energy project in St. Louis. I'm here to tell you that these charges are a gross distortion of facts, which in my view have been purposely manipulated to provide cover for far more desperate and nefarious acts within the once proud and honorable institution the St. Louis Post Dispatch. You see, these are indeed desperate times. And I fully expect the Post Dispatch to, to drastically cut budgets. I expect them to trim, to cut jobs, to trim budgets. If you knew the number of talented, seasoned journalists who have been marched out of that building these past few years would break your heart. It speaks volumes about a frantic effort, effort to survive while sacrificing, in my opinion, the integrity and goodwill once enjoyed at the Post-Dispatch. Right. And you know what? I was old enough, I should have known better, but I'm embarrassed to admit, I did not expect the Post-Dispatch to stoop to this level, even though I knew that they had this taste for me. I did not expect my bosses to jump to an erroneous conclusion and immediately reduce me to nothing more than a stereotype. Upper management, without the common courtesy of an explanation, quickly jumped on a stubborn, punitive path of action and refused to back down even when they had the facts in front of them. If management had bothered to ask me, they would have known that my trip had nothing to do with East St. Louis. If they had taken the time to really know me, to know my past, to know my passions, which I've written about in their paper, my passions inside and outside the post dispatch, they would have known that I've been writing about investing in black youth. I've been writing about creating vibrant, sustainable urban communities. They would have instinctively understood why the Summit Council for World Peace, an international organization, dedicated to addressing the crisis of worldwide poverty, invited me to Washington, D.C. 
They're the ones that offer to reimburse me for the trip. Unlike the post dispatch, this agency, the uh, Summit Council for World Peace, this agency, through Congress, former Congressman Walter Fonshore, took interest in a book I'm working on, which calls for a serious realignment of, black, of the black leadership agenda, something else I've written about in the post dispatch, in order to work in forward President Obama. The book proposes that Obama's initiatives, uh, innovative initiatives, if we really wrapped our hands around this, if we really got to work, if we really stepped up, the black community can finally create long-lasting change in low-income urban neighborhoods. That's what the book was about. That's why I went to Washington, D.C. I wanted to see an international organization that's involved with this effort. Sadly, Management of the Post, in my opinion, they work on and further a small-minded, predictable, and divisive agenda instead of welcoming this project, respecting their colleague who is calling for immediate action in perilous times, they chose a small-minded path. Five days after I was locked out of the building, the Guild suggested that management might, that management might want to hear my side. So they called me the next day. Eleven days after I suspect they were combing through my emails, they locked my computer. Looking for evidence to bolster the ridiculous claim I heard from the deal. Although I've been told that management hasn't talked to one person involved with the DC trip, they decided to terminate me. And guess what? The reason they cited for my termination, the union tells me, they didn't think I was remorseful enough. Ooh. On the same day that the company decided to fire me, I learned through the grapevine that two other colonists were given a day's suspension because they allegedly violated the company's ethics policy for working with competing media. The following day, after I heard of my discharge, the union called to share an offer that the Post had made to save my reputation. If I agreed to sign, which I understand requires that I cannot speak, if I agreed to sign an agreement, I would have gotten four big fat weeks of, of uh, severance pay, the opportunity to freelance for the post dispatch, or they came back and said, okay, think about freelance, you can write a farewell call. Under this arrangement, management wouldn't leak the reasons for my uh, resignation. But post dispatch, I'm here to tell you, no thanks. I could never return to. 